Hello, as you can probably tell from that uh, other screen that's showing up there at the moment, we have the legend, Mr. Crease himself. Oi, oi, matey, how you doing? Hello, mate, how are you? Nice to see you again. I haven't seen you for obviously pretty much a whole year now. And you're pretty uh, thankful for that, I know. <laughs> and you're oh, pretty grateful for that, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, nah, nah, you know. Miss you boys around there, do you know what I mean? It's, oh, miss everybody, you know, yeah. fans and, 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 you know, everyone. Um, but it's just the way the world is at the minute, and hopefully it gets back to normal next year. Damn you, COVID. Damn you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, My so... My not looking any better at the minute, is it? It's not, in all honesty. But anyway, moving swiftly on. <laughs> Snetterton. Yeah. Have you yeah. recovered yet? I'm still a little bit achy. I mean, um, I got up and uh, I've been, I've been, I don't know if you've you've seen him a couple of interviews, but I've been working with a guy called David Ford, who's a, a sports psychologist. Yeah. Um, he used to play for Millwall Football Club. He was the most capped Millwall football player, and he played for Ireland International. Um, but he's obviously been at top flight football, where you know. Ireland? He, <laughs> well, <laughs> obviously, obviously. Uh, sorry, mate. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, uh, it, you know, so he's been working quite closely with me, and uh, I got up this morning, up past six, you know, down doing a bit of breathing, a bit of meditation, you know, all this sort of stuff that I've been getting into since Croft, and uh, it just sets me up. And like, you know, I woke up and on my neck and the back of my arms and. Oh, and then you do that, and then you feel fit as a fiddle uh, until it gets to the night time again, and then you sort of start flaking <laughs> you know, a little bit now. I've, just, I've literally only just got in from work about half an hour ago, so um, yeah, it's it's working. I feel okay. Um, I'm glad that we've got three weeks break, but then I want to go into Brands next weekend and do the job, so it's a bit of uh, a bit of emotions flying everywhere at the minute. Yeah, um, you've had quite a run, haven't you? Um, if we discount Silverstone and Croft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I it. mean, coming off of Cruxton was, was a, one of the best drives, best weekend I've ever had. I mean, you know, casting our minds back there to run P7 with, with Matt Neal in front and, and Colin behind. Um, you know, it was a great race and I could, I, I felt quite comfortable with, with them guys there. And obviously, you know, the race before sitting with Josh and Tom quite easily, you know, on the radio sort of discussing whether I'm going to go past them and stuff. And, uh, you know, like for me, I, I've been getting better and better all season. And I just feel that I'm knocking on that door now, you know, this weekend at, at SNET, um, I've shown my pace, uh, P3 in, in practice was a genuine time on old tyres. Um, Tom and Josh went new um, and I had the pace on them. I mean, whether that was a temperature thing or a, a pressure thing, I don't know, but you still have to go out there and do the job. And, oh, yeah. um, and, and you know, even at Croft, I turned up there, you know, even though I had a, the worst weekend I've probably ever had racing, um, I still turned up and done my job. You know, I turned up, I put it P9 in qualifying and you know, didn't start race one. Um, race two, I drove, I think, 14 places through the grid, uh, or 12 or 14 places up to 10th um, before, the, before the engine let go again. And then another another engine problem in race three, which I didn't get going. But I still turned up and done, you know, a, a good show for what, what I had. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, I, qualifying again, uh, um, at Brands, at Alton, at Croft, you know, everywhere I've been, I've been there or thereabouts, so I'm definitely getting better. I saw before Snetterton, you put up something, mission one, stay on track, tick. Mission yeah. two, finish race, tick. Yeah. <laughs> Which was hardly surprising after the run that you'd had, but you didn't put mission three, Flash Tom to get out of the way during the race because you were faster than him. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not often you can put that against someone, somebody uh, of Tom Chilton's stature, is it? And uh, to be fair to Tom, 
he had a few gremlins this yeah. weekend um, with, with a turbo and bits and pieces. And uh, but that guy is uh, unbelievable. Like he, he's like a Duracell bunny. That like, even when he has a bad weekend, he's still bouncing around. And uh, but it just goes to show, like he's a true professional. He he, he dusts himself down. He gets on with it. And uh, I'm sure he'd be back more than stronger at Brands Hatch. That's what I was going to say. He is the ultimate professional off the track as well, isn't he? During the weeks with all his diets and all the stuff that he, he does, etc. Yeah. He, put, he puts the rest of us to shame, surely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he does, to be fair. To be fair to him. But he's a, he's a lovely guy. Um, you know, I went through a bit of a rough stage this year. I mean, when I think back of my year this year, it's it's definitely a roller coaster. You know, obviously... Taking us back to Brands Act when we uh, we lost our, our baby, Jodie was pregnant. And, yeah, you know, and sort of going out there racing, and you know, you got to get out. I got out of the car that weekend, and I couldn't even remember a race. I couldn't remember what I'd done. I couldn't focus on anything, and uh, you know, and then and then we sort of come back, and you you have to reset and push a button. And to be fair to Tom and Josh, really, but. I remember I remember this for the rest of my life and I, that that Sunday I was sitting in the truck and uh, on my own up up where we get ready and change and it was just before race one I think and I've been up since I've been up since three o'clock in the morning um, you know at the hospital and bits and pieces waiting outside because of COVID and all this sort of stuff and then out ready getting ready to go racing and my head obviously weren't with it and uh, yeah. I was just sitting there and he came in to get changed and I was already in my kit and he I was sitting on my because we've got bunk beds in our truck and I'm sitting on my bed and he's he's coming and he's sort of he just like genuinely came in put his arm around me and was like come on mate you know we've got this like let's let's not you know let's not think about it let's get you get in the zone and and me and him had why he got changed for you know 10 20 minutes we just had a real heart to heart and I'll never forget it um, and uh, you know he, he, he's a he's a genuinely really really nice guy and his heart's in the right place Tom and and again Josh has just been a rock all year for me um, both of them have just been have been superb and obviously you know this weekend Josh helping me out with a bit of mind mind coaching as well as obviously the race weekend and you know Snetterton track walk we done it at it's half past five and by the time we got round it was like outside now pitch black and we said we went to every corner we spoke about the entry we spoke mid corner exit we looked at curves we looked at this this blah, blah, blah. and i'd done everything he said i got out of the car and i was p3 and he was like that's it i'm not helping you anymore <laughs> <laughs> i was going to say they i'm like i'm you know working with the two of them it's really it must have really brought your race craft on as well and and your attitude your mentality your approach to it it must have helped enormously unbelievably i mean honestly it's just listening to how depth uh josh and tom are in in debriefs and 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 people don't know this about josh but he's a proper highly skilled engineer as well as a, a driver not that he gets involved in engineering his car but his feedback is incredible to engineer his car. You know, right. Steve Brady does a great job with him. And Mick Cook, who's obviously Josh's father-in-law, um, is Tom Chilton's engineer as well. And he's obviously done it at the highest level. And, um, you know, it's just it's just the little things where I, Josh's head, he's got like a such a wise head on young shoulders. And I'd love to have been as wise as him and as sensible as him when I was that age. Do you know what I mean? And, uh, it's it's incredible to to work with and their approach and you know you like you said before like Tom's attitude and the way that he takes it serious and and you know how how much goes into it for him and and it's rubbed off for me definitely. You know, I turn up on the weekend. I'm in the zone. I'm ready to go. You know, we do our normal ritual, which is having cups of tea and jammy dodgers and playing on the Xbox. And, uh, <laughs> and before you know it, we're so relaxed, we're ready to go racing on the Saturday. So, excellent. Right, I just want to um, take us over to the Jack Sears because you yeah. said at the start of the season that was your that was your goal, that was your target. 
let's just oh. run a let's just run a few things out there at the moment. So we've only got brands to go. Okay. You're yeah. eleven points in front of Carl Bordley. Yeah. Bobby, hopefully he'll be back for brands. Um, and as you mentioned in one of your interviews, they can take points off each other. You'll be well happy to see him there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, Bobby's got a great chance of still winning it. And, yeah. you know, um, it's ironic that it's me, Cole and Bobby uh, in for the title. I mean, I know Sam and, and Jack Patel can still win it effectively, but I feel that it's... Uh, it's going to be out of me, Cole, and, and Bobby, and how ironic that we're yeah. all teammates next year. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm like, think, you know, I'm like the standings. I'm at the standings at the moment. You're 303 points. Carl's 292. Bobby 280. Sam 278, and Jack 264. So, as you say, any of those five can actually win it, especially when you consider there's 60 points on, on the table at Brands. Yeah. So, well, I think, I mean, obviously, I've had one day uh, at home and I've sort of sat there and all I thought about is, right, if I come third in each three of the races and Bobby wins all three and Cole comes second, I still win. If Bob, if Bordley wins all three and I come <laughs> third, like, do you know what I mean? So I've worked, it, I've worked it out what I've got to do. I mean, the thing is, you know, touring car, anything can happen. You know, yeah. you can get smashed off, you can break down, you know, whatever. And... I had a car underneath me this weekend, which was comfortable inside the top 10. But if you notice, and, and if you look back at the races, I've just watched them back at my mother and father-in-law's house today. Um, I was very sensible. I was switched on. I mean, I got into a bit of a battle in race two with Matt Neal and Tom Oliphant and uh, obviously threw it in the side of Tom by locking up the brakes. And as soon as I hit him, I thought, what are you doing? Like, you, you can throw this this championship away so easily. So I yeah. just literally backed off and let, let them let them go. Yeah. And then Oliphant come up behind me in race three. Um, and... You know, he was coming on quick and I couldn't see anyone behind him for, for miles. And, uh, you know, I was back, I was 13th. He was coming up to try and battle me for 13th. And I thought, let's just finish 14th. You know, oh, I literally yeah. drove out the way. I braked off a line, let him pass. And I tucked in behind him and, you know, sat behind him and, and watched a great race with him and Matt Neal just firing each other off, which I was oh. laughing to myself while I was driving around, like watching them to go at it. So I drove a very... Uh, solid race. I felt the front left wearing quite a lot through Corum. So I literally, on my on my delta, on my lap time, I was approaching Corum a tenth, you know, either a tenth up or a tenth down. And then by the time I come out of Corum, I was a second down on my lap because I just wanted to coast it around there. I didn't want to put too much pressure on that front left and get a puncture or, you know, so I drove like I'm going for a championship. So that's the mentality I've got to take into brands. Um, I really, really want to win the Jack Sears this year. Um, it, it's been my goal all, all year. Um, and, uh, you know, I would have won it this weekend if if Croft and Silverstone would have gone yeah. according to plan. You know, Croft at Silverstone, I, I, I caught Bobby. I mean, I think he qualified in front of me because we had a problem in qualifying. I had a loose clevis on the front. But I caught him up in... Um, First race, overtook him, and then obviously got fired off by Garnell. Uh, I caught him up in race two, overtook him, and then the engine went bang. And in race three, I caught him up, overtook him, and then the engine went bang again. Yeah. So I had the pace on him, and if I'd have finished all three of them races, I would have lifted the Jacksons this weekend, but yeah. that's not the case. Um, he had a stormer at Croft. I mean, he was, he was on fire, to be fair to Bobby. I mean... It would have been a good race if I'd have started race one because I think he started fifth, I started ninth, and I think we would have been a proper battle. That would have been a proper championship battle between me and Bob at Croft. But unfortunately, it weren't, it weren't to be. So I'm hoping he'll be back for Brands. It's his home track as much as it is mine. And, uh, yeah. and fair play to whoever wins it, me, Cole, or, or Bobby, I think. The way it's standing at the moment, obviously you're on top of the points and that lot, but I was looking a little bit deeper as well. You've, well won, okay. you've won three weekends so far in the Jack Sears. Yeah. The other two have won two each. Yeah, right. So you're ahead on the weekends. 
You're the bad thing. Is am I going to win three and I'm not? Or am I going to win four? <laughs> You're the only driver that, that has achieved the 60 point maximum in a yeah. weekend. I should have done that at Fruxton, though, shouldn't I? Without the punch <laughs> on the last one. Yeah. You've actually won 10 races out of the 24. That's been in, yeah. in, in the Jack Sears, you know, obviously. Yeah. You and I've had seven DNFs. You've had seven DNFs in that as well. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's a pretty good, pretty plus, good record. Plus the, plus the two, to a DNF at Alton, which was my own fault. I threw it off. And a DNF at Brands, which me and Bobby come together. So I've had nine DNFs throughout the season. So that's a pretty poor stat. Like, well, it's a good stat in the winning the 10 Jack Sears, but nine DNFs, you know, that's not, not where I want to be. Yeah, let's face it. You've had more race retirements, and Andy Neats had disqualifications. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? I can't just, that. just. <laughs> uh, he's a lot. He's a nice guy, Andy. I get on really. I get on really well with him, and uh, I think he's had a bit of stick. Um, he has, which yeah, yeah. you know. Fair, fair play to him, but I just don't think, uh, you know, that his family should be brought into it. You know, no. we all get a bit of stick no. here and there, but I just, uh, you know, he, he don't deserve that. So, no, of but course not. let's keep giving him stick, but no, not his family. <laughs> You'll be all right. <laughs> Something which you're, you're probably not aware of, but this Jack Sears this year, it's the cl most closely contested one there's been. There's oh, only really? 39 points separating the top five this year. Do you know how many points separated the top five at the end last year? Well, Rory Butcher won it, didn't he, last year? Yeah. And who would have been second? Tom Oliphant? Um, hold on one second. Uh, not sure about second. I must admit, I haven't got that up in front of me. I think it would have been Oliphant. But, um, but what was the gap? Between the top five last year, bear in mind there's only 39 between the top five this year. Between the top five last year, 239 points. Wow. That's how closely contested this one is this year. I'll I, I tell you what, though, Jack Patel, I mean, he's just been finishing races and finishing <laughs> races, and he's, he's, he's still there. He's still yeah. there for the championship, you know. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's gone a bit under the radar, to be fair to him. He's a, again, he's another lovely lad, and... Uh, you know, wouldn't be grudge him or, or Sam. You know, I think I think all five of us, you know, have, have, have we've had our ups and downs. And unfortunate for Sam because he was actually ahead of me when he went off the track at Snet in the race three, and um, you know, and had to park it. But he would have obviously jumped Bobby if he'd have just finished that race. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I got very lucky with Cole Bordley uh, and Sam coming together through Corum on race two. I backed. I backed. Uh, boardly into Sam and Sam went for a move and took Bordley <laughs> out and because otherwise if, if Cole would have finished behind me he'd have been leading the Jack Sears still by a point. I was actually looking at obviously you know, you know on the telly but I had TSL loaded up as well and I was watching all these things and the three of you coming closer together and I was thinking oh my god then, then in race three when it was just have you Oops, gone? Sorry. Yeah. No I'm back I'm back yeah. And then in race three, when it was Oliphant coming up towards you and nobody behind him, I was going, let him go past. Just let him go yeah. past. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. Yeah, I did. I literally did. I mean, I was battling with Matt Neal, like I said, and, uh, you know, just getting into, you know, I love racing them guys. I love it. I love, you know, Matt's a season pro and Tom's a great driver and, you know, and racing with all them good people. But I've got to... You know, I've won two Geneta championships, and I've got to go into championship mode now, and and, and yes. not not worry about where I am. That's that's the stage it's at now, and you've had you've had experience of that, haven't you? With yeah, the GT4 I mean, Super Cup, especially in 2018. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I mean, Jack Minshaw, he he took me to the wire, didn't he? Uh, at Brands, and uh, again, we you know, we had a few results where the car let me down or whatever, and sort of. But I had to, I know the job I've got to do, I'm confident I can do it. The team, the car, um, as long as it don't let me down, um, we'll be fine. I just want to sum up this year 
between the difference between this year and last year. Obviously, there were issues last year. We know it's an older car, etc. This year, you're in a better car. You seem to have the team behind you as well. Not saying you didn't last year, but you've got the team fully behind you as well. And But last year, overall, you ended up the season with 11 points. This season, you've had 11 points finishes. Yeah. That's a hell of a day. How many points have we got? Four. 43, oh, sorry, I'm 17th, aren't I? Um, where are you at the moment? You're on 46. 46, yeah. Just the creeps ahead of Bobby this weekend, didn't I, I think? Yeah, he's on 44, yeah. yeah. What's, what's Carl Ward in the main championship? Um, Carl... Uh, on 18. Right, OK. I mean, yeah, I mean this year... Uh, don't get me wrong, last year was was great i mean tony yeah and tony gillam and team Ard were you know if you actually look at stats they gave me more of a reliable card than i've had this year um (laughs) if if you wanted to argue that point but the thing is this we've just been very unlucky this year i mean this this car is different class The, the the btc are different class when it comes to you know, these failures, they've never seen, they've never, ever seen a, a BTC racing, you know, and it's, mm. the, I saw in Steve Dudman and Bert Taylor's eyes at Croft and, and every single body on my car, how gutted they were because we win and lose together. And when that car broke down again, you know, it was just, it was beyond belief. They've never seen it. And yeah. that gives you, that gives you a bit of, you know, I know that I'm in the right team and I know I'm in the right car. And um, when you've got people like Steve Dudman, you know, fuming as well, and it's his car, like, you know, and you see the passion from him. He's been he's been great, you know, he's been great for, for me this year. Um, he's taught me the business side of it, you know, quite harshly at some times, but also fair, fair enough because it costs a lot of money to run these cars. And I get that. And... Um, but it's just the support. I mean, you know, Ben Taylor, my engineer, um, you know, we've clicked together. He's very calming. He, he knows how to control my temper, my mind, my, you know, he, he knows wh- where and what to tell me as and when and to just get on with it at times. And, you know, and, and I need that sometimes. And, uh, you know, Jason, my number one, and Poxy and, and all the rest of the crew on my car, that they work so hard and you know the difference was at Team Ard I didn't really understand stuff I didn't really know what the car was doing but now we get out of the car and we're going right we've got a bit of entry oversteer here we've got a bit of understeer here we've got this happening here and the guys just go to work and change the car last year my mechanics I had one set up pretty much all year we didn't really change the car at all last year um so my mechanics last year had it had it nice and easy, but these boys, honestly, <laughs> every session they're changing the car like, you know, from one side to the next, and and that's why BTC are so good because, you know, we've got the great mechanics that can swap a spring change in ten minutes, where last year it might have taken half an hour and, it, and we wouldn't have been able to do that or whatever. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. we've got we've got spare engines, we've got spare subframes set up, we've got you know, all these different things ready to go. Um, but you obviously pay more of a budget for that sort of course, side of things. Of um, and, you know, I'm sure Tony Gillum and Team Hard are going to be great next year with the new Cupra. That new car, that, that should be really interesting, that, yeah. Looks looks really, really good. And it's what Team Hard needed at the moment. And yeah. I said that to Tony this weekend. I said, you know... Y- it's different class driving a brand new car on this BTC grid from from a 2012 car to you know how they've evolved and uh, I think I think everyone on that grid is doing a, a, an amazing job, including including them guys. And um, you know we're still we're still all covered by a second over 30 of us, and uh, I still think that's a credit to everybody. It is indeed. It's what makes the BTC. Easy. BTCC, so special. <laughs> no, <Yeah>. Best case facts. <laughs> right, before yeah. I let you go, I want one of them caps. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. My merchandise. 
get online on uh, my, my new website that's just been released uh, uh, michaelcreaseracing.com and uh, we released that just before Snetterton weekend where you can get online and buy all my merchandise and um, you know there's a couple of nice little surprises in the in the pack there as well with the merchandise that, that you get and uh, you know we, we want it all retweeted on, on uh, social media and uh, it'd be lovely to actually see you guys come down and wear it next year, hopefully, when uh, we're back on the grid. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. We all want to be there, mate. We all want to be there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, it's good. Check check the website out. It's a good little website. It's, uh, I'll include yeah. the link to it at the end yeah. of the video there. Yeah, with yeah. the post. And um, the, model, the model is unbelievable. You should see the model. Yeah, I think I might have messaged you about that, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely a 10. All right, maybe like Josh Cook would say, he's probably a 7.5 about her. Well, I wouldn't go 7.5. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, say hi to Phil and that, and uh, cheers for the support, guys. And I'm, I'm hoping to have the next conversation once we've won the uh, Jack Sears. Definitely. Book it in there now, mate. Book it in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you take care. Look after yourself and your family, yeah? And um, yeah. can't wait to see, at least see you lifting the trophy. If not in person, at least we'll be able to watch it. Yeah, no. Cheers, mate. Appreciate that. Cheers, guys. Not a problem. We'll catch you later, mate. Bye for now.